death penalty activist and professor at the University of Texas, and also a member of the International Socialist Organization. Woo! Stand up! Well, um, I have the um, honor, and, and it's sort of right now the unfortunate honor of follow, following John Africa's call to action, which I enthusiastically endorse. I wrote down a few things that I wanted to say because um, I'm going to use some of Kenneth's words and I just want to get it right, all right? So the first thing to say is um, that you've already heard about Kenneth's case. You know about the law of parties. You know about um, how horrible um, his case is and how flimsy it is. And every detail of this case is a, is a rail on the tracks of injustice. He is factually innocent of murder, yet the state of Texas is relentlessly seeking his execution. A black man without an adequate defender, he faced prosecutors who called him an animal and a thug. Racism poisoned his case as it has done for hundreds of others on death row. And the law of parties is about rounding up and taking whole groups of young men off the streets under the assumption that they must be guilty of something and deserve to die whether they committed murder or not. And Texas death row is full of such stories. But not everybody convicted of a federal crime goes to jail, even when they are party to murder. When it came to Scooter Libby, for example, mm -hmm. President Bush felt a 30-month sentence was too harsh. Scooter Libby didn't mind the possibility that his actions could cause the deaths of others, and he didn't spend a night in jail. He took the fall for Dick Cheney, and together they conspired to lie and justify the devastating and murderous Iraq war. And it is doubtful that either one of them will be tried for capital murder under the law of parties. George W. Bush, I can almost stop there, <laughs> uh, is also party to murder the thousands and thousands of people dead in Iraq, but also when he was the governor of Texas, he presided over more than 150 executions, and in more than one third of them, lawyers appealed to him to commute the sentences of inmates with cases for innocence. Inmates suffering from mental illness or unable to understand the weight of their situation due to mental retardation. Black men sentenced by all white juries and hanging judges and offenders who were mere youth when caught up in crime or who, like Kenneth, found themselves in the wrong place at the wrong time. Kenneth has been forced to grow up on death row and he has grown into a fine man whom I respect as an activist, as a poet, as a person, as a member of the family and of our community. And he's done this in dehumanizing conditions that would break any man and confine his imagination, but he has not given up. In one of his many eloquent poems, he recalls a friend telling him to keep up the fight, right these wrongs. And the state of Texas is a runaway train when it comes to the death penalty. It is out of control, and the whole world is watching to see where it will end. And we have to say that Rick Perry is waving that train on as it continues down on its merry way, and we can't rely on the governor to put the brake on that train. We can't trust the court to lay itself on the tracks for the wrongly convicted. It is up to us. We have to keep up the fight to right these wrongs. History tells us that struggle can call the system into question. In 1972, the death penalty was temporarily abolished, mainly because of people like you and people like us, mainly because the public climate had shifted against it. It isn't an accident that all this happened at the same time that people were protesting the war in Vietnam, fighting against racism, including the racism of the criminal injustice system. Injustice persists, and we have to keep up their fight and right these wrongs. The Illinois moratorium seven years ago was a significant moment in the fight for abolition. The beginning of this year marked another significant moment. The controversy around lethal injection and whether it is a humane way to put people to death or whether it is, in fact, torture has led 11 states to put executions on hold as the whole process is reevaluated. In just the past several months, Maryland, Nebraska, New Mexico, and Montana came close to repealing the death penalty and here in Texas, even the Dallas Morning News reversed its old position and came out against capital punishment this year. From the death row 10 in Illinois, pardoned or granted clemency as a result of activism surrounding their cases, to Kevin Cooper, whose execution was stopped after public pressure led um, uh, to, to, his, um, uh, <laughs> to, the, to, the, to his reprieve, sorry. And then more recently, and, and very exciting, is the stay for Troy Davis, also a product of public pressure and activism around his case. Kenneth wrote recently, I won't be defeated. These times we face are utterly drastic, but I plan to defy all odds. And I'm here to tell you today that we can defy the odds. We have a lot of work to do even after today. We must keep up the fight. We must right these wrongs. 
and uh, let's go march and, and do that, and maybe um, now it's time for another chant. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Must not die. It's not justice. It's a lie. Kenneth Foster must not die.